Welcome back to The Real News Network, and reality asserts itself. We're continuing our series of interviews with Heiner Flasbeck about the state of the global economy and what we can do about the crisis. And Heiner joins us again in the studio. Thank you. Okay. So, one more time. Heiner worked at UNCTAD, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. From 2003 to 2012, he was the director of the Division on Globalization and Development Strategies. He now is director of Flaspec Economics, a consultancy for global macroeconomic questions. You can find him at flaspec-economics.de. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me. So, several times over the course of the series, you've talked about the need for higher wages. Um, we're in the Real News Center in, in Baltimore, and the other day I had an interesting conversation with our, one of the plumbers, and we were talking about whether minimum wages should go up in the United States, and, 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 and I was saying, you know, this thing about 10-10 an hour that President Obama's calling for, mm. it's, it's kind of disingenuous because 10-10 an hour is better than 7 or $8 for sure, but mm. it's not really going to get people out of poverty, which is what he claims. And the living wage demand for $15 is at the very least where things should be. And he says to me, uh, well, what is the point? Be if, if you get this raise in minimum wage, you know, it may cause other wages to go up as well. And then they're just going to raise the prices. So what's the point? Because we're, everybody will be right back where we were again, were before. That's right. In so far, if we would have unreasonable wage increases, say of 10%, as we have uh, had in, in the past sometimes uh, during the oil price explosion, and so then it would go into prices, that's for sure. But, but what we have to, to reinstall, so to say, is, is the, the normal part of the wage increase, namely wages following productivity. Real wages can follow productivity without any problem for the overall economy, without uh, igniting inflation, nothing like that but with very stable inflation rates. And this we have lost in the last years. Well, but back up for a sec. Uh, we talked about that earlier, but if, e even if wages go up according to productivity, mm. the plumber's gonna say, well, why can't they raise prices anyway? No, they, they wouldn't because then we, we have to hope at least that there's certain competition in the market uh, that avoids uh, people from, from increasing prices beyond that. And this is true. Uh, this we can show. Uh, I mentioned already we have the very strong relationship between unit labor costs all over the world for the United States for very long periods of time uh, between unit labor costs and the prices and the inflation rate. So this is very stable and uh, sometimes you have movements where uh, capital is winning more and which is the last 20 years uh, but uh, and labor lag lagging behind but uh, overall if we have uh, uh, increase of, uh, of wages, there will be no inflationary bouts. That's absolutely clear. And th this, is, this is at least the one mechanism, the, one, the competition in the market that prevents the system then from doing artificial, so to say, uh, artificially increasing prices that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't come There's out. There's enough competition to stop There's it, still even in the sectors that are highly monopolized? Well, that's not quite clear whether it's everywhere, but uh, for the overall economy, this is very stable. And so we can still trust on that, that it will be the outcome. So what would we have to reinstall? As I said, we have to reinstall the rule that wages should follow uh, productivity plus the inflation target, which means that real wages should rise like productivity. This, we, what have, what about workers this we have lost in, in the last 20, 30 years. At least the last 20 or 30 years, but if not even more, the, the low end of the wage scale yeah, is then, far then below. Comes, then comes, in addition, the effect that is very strong in, in the United States, much stronger in the United States than in Europe, for example, that we have the, the inter, inter uh, uh, Wage, wage structure, structural changes. The the the, uh, pa the major part of the of the uh, wage increases going to the upper end, where the bankers and all these people it's are, more, had are located. Previously, had been more balanced. Yeah, because where, where of we more had a balanced increase because of unionization. This is uh, for me very clearly a point where the government has to step in. What we need is to reinstall the rule that everybody should get the productivity increase because the productivity increase is not produced by the bankers. The bankers are just uh, taking it. If, it, if your formula it has had been followed, yeah. what, would, what do you think would be the minimum wage now? Well, if, if the minimum wage would have been dynamized in, in that way, namely put uh, on the productivity, then it would be, I don't know, beyond, I think I've beyond seen 15. Number, beyond, yeah, I th I think I've it would seen be beyond, like $20 it would be, an hour. Yeah, it would be beyond, clearly beyond. Uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, I, I always take the example of uh, the uh, non uh, 
uh, supervisory workers in the United States and the statistics called the non-supervisory workers. If you look at their wage from 2000 to 2013, there is no increase in real terms. If you look at that, there is no increase for the whole bunch of these people, non-supervisory workers. So normal workers have no real increase at all. And this is a scandal because they have produced the productivity. They have, they have, they have so to say, generated it. And, and they are excluded from that. So if, if, if now government were to say the minimum wage should, have, should be now what it would have been if yeah. this had kept up in, in the formula you're giving, say around 20 bucks an hour, yeah. would that now be inflationary if it was raised to 20 no, bucks an hour? No, not for the minimum wage as such. No, no. The minimum wage is not so important. Uh, as, as uh, It is not overall wages. It's just for more fraction. But that, might, fraction, that would have an effect on fraction. wages generally. It would have uh, an effect of wages generally. But w what I'm uh, asking for is not uh, to, to, su to, so to say, the... Uh, the, the, to turn around the whole process by now uh, having explosive wage increases. But what I say, reinstall that rule. Uh, this still leaves the people, uh, the wage share, so to say, at a rather low level for the moment uh, because it's impossible to change it to, 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 uh, by, by pushing for very high wages. We will really produce inflation. So the system is such that what you can do is you can reinstall the rule that the people uh, get equal, equally share in the productivity increase, which is uh, uh, a politically uh, a thing that has to be has to be pushed through, but uh, this would even imply that the wage share remains at the low level where it is now. Well, what do you uh, what do you make of this ten ten demand? Because because it, it seems almost I mean it's not symbolic if you're making eight yeah, bucks to go to ten ten, but but a family with it's one kid yeah, sure, at ten ten yeah. no, is no, still it's, in it's poverty. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like in Germany, it seems Germany, more like an election. In Germany, we're talking about eight fifty euros, which is something very similar to ten ten, uh, but is is clearly not enough. In Switzerland, the country where I'm, I'm living, very close to Switzerland, so there they're discussing now. They have an initiative for uh, that would go to the electorate uh, for twenty two frank uh, Swiss francs, which is eighteen dollars or something like that. No? This is something. Uh, no, it's more, more. The dollar is the other way around. It's 18 euros, but it's 25, 25 uh, dollars. They, they're talking about 25 euros uh, uh, dollars as the minimum wage in Switzerland. And Switzerland has more or less the same productivity as, as the other countries have. Well, let's look at the real, what's going to happen in the United States. In all likelihood, 10, 10, even 1010 is not going to get passed. It won't get through the no. House. Yeah, uh, and, and you, the, the Democrats could easily be losing the, uh, the Senate in the next election, which mm. kind of boggles the mind. And, uh, and 10 10 ain't enough anyway. Yeah, so, and, and where, where are we headed then? This idea that, like, if, if your yeah. analysis is that the only possible recovery is a wage led recovery, yeah. and we're still going the other direction, yeah, then so we, then what? Yeah, we're going into the Japanese scenario that I mentioned already. We, we stagnation with kind of deflation because we have permanent pressure on wages, we have uh, no purchase power in the, in the hands of the mass of the consumers. And, uh, and this is the, the perfect scenario. As the monetary policy could, could sort of say, uh, by producing this uh, perceived wealth uh, in the hands of a few, uh, could, could uh, paper over this process for a short time, but it will not go on forever. No, we have to come back and, and it will happen in one way or the other, maybe after the next crisis, uh, that we have to understand and we have to come back to a point where we have to say, Everybody has to get the productivity increase, otherwise it will, the economy cannot work. But people are shying away from that. Larry Summers, my former colleague Larry Summers, just had a, peop, a piece in the Financial Times talking about growth policies and I don't know what, but it's, it wasn't clear what he's talking about. He, he doesn't even say what he's talking about, what the growth policies are. He says we are in a, in a kind of secular stagnation, but he doesn't say what, what is the policies because he's shying away from saying, well, you have to intervene in the labor market and and go for higher wages. But well, they don't want to open that door. I, no, I, nobody wants to open that door. I, I, when the G20 was in Toronto, we did a piece on The Real News where we looked at the final declaration of the G20 countries. And we looked through the whole document to see if we could find one use of the word wages. No, no, and don't. we couldn't find one. We found no. one sentence which talked about the need to increase demand, which implied higher wages. And where was that? This should happen in China. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not, yeah, not, yeah, here. yeah not here. <laughs> no, but even people who are, who are asking for more expansionary fiscal policies, like Larry Summers or Paul Krugman, 
they're not talking about the intervention in the labor market. But this is what is absolutely needed because there is the imbalance. It has nothing to do with the market economy if, if the one side is extremely strong and can dominate the other side. If capital can dominate labor, you, have, you don't have a market result. But they, the economists are living in, with a fiction that this is a market result. You have extremely strong companies for thousand reasons because they are rich, because they, uh, there is high unemployment and so on. But still, there should be an outcome like in a market. Yeah, it's, it's okay for the state to intervene on, on, in labor law that yeah. makes it very, very difficult to organize unions in the United States. Yeah. So that kind of state intervention, yeah. that's quite all right. You can do it wherever you want. You can do it on the price side directly. You can give a guideline for, for wages. No, I'm yeah. saying for their argument, they, for don't their they don't mind no. if the government steps in, rewrites labor no, laws. No, no, that's right. Makes it, it difficult to, other, to have yeah, unions. Yeah, to have that's unions. okay. That, that, or, or, or recently, yeah, where was it in the, in the southern United States? Yeah, yeah, I think no, in Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you see how politicians yeah, yeah, intervene to prevent unionization. Even the, the little unionization that is still there to to, be, to get rid of rid that's of okay. It, to abolish that. That is okay. Yeah, because yeah, because this is the dogma. The dogma is uh, you don't intervene into that market. Uh, you're happy with the power of the capitalists, but you okay, don't. Okay, so we're we're still in search of our rational, reasonable capitalist. We're going to see in the next um, segment if we can see. find our rational, reasonable capitalist. Mm -hmm. And so please join us on uh, our Don Quixote quest in the final segment of our series of interviews with Heiner Flesbeck on the Real News Network.